Hi hey guys, welcome to your weekly US news update. This is a little bit of a different setting. We're actually uh, in Texas today. We're northwest of Austin at the Reve Ranch. We're here, this is called the Texas Public Safety Response Robot Summit. And, and basically what it is, it's a public safety event with uh, a ton of companies that are presenting their products. And, um, and then we have a lot of public safety departments that are here from Texas. So uh, we made the trip with Jason. Uh, we've been here for three days and uh, today is the day that I usually record the news update. So I figured I would give you a little bit of what's going on in here because I know a lot of you are either in public safety or, or even just in the reg regular commercial world. And, uh, and there was actually a lot of really good products that we saw this week. And the first one is, this is a submit for not only air stuff, but also ground control robots. And, and this was just amazing. We flew, uh, we, well, it's not flying, I guess in this case, we, I drove this robot that's, uh, I think it was $250,000 robot that goes in and, and for, uh, for public safety, for the police department and SWAT teams, for example. And, uh, and you can control this whole thing. Just, just an amazing experience doing that. Uh, we saw a bunch of software companies, uh, a lot of really good information from our friends at DroneSense and uh, this this software is if you're in the public safety world and you don't know about drone sense yet this is something that you need to be looking into because uh, these guys are doing um, a, a control center essentially for uh, the entire operation so you know one person flying the drone is not really uh, the only thing that happens during a mission uh, especially for pub public safety so they have a way to uh, condense that information and share it with everyone and it, it, the, the demonstration was absolutely amazing so uh, really excited to see this uh, we saw a lot of really cool drones. The first one that I looked at was the uh, Evolve Dynamics. Uh, this this drone at first it was I thought it was actually an underwater rover, and um, it, um, it it's got an IP55 rating, which means that you can basically throw anything you want at it, and this thing is going to keep going. And uh, and it's, uh, it's designed to go in very harsh environments. So we saw them operating, they said they have uh, two drones right now in uh, Antarctica uh, doing missions. And uh, this thing is cool because it, it's got a tether. So if you're not familiar with a tether, this is a cable that connects straight to the bottom of the drone and, uh, and is gonna keep the drone powered for an extended period of time. Uh, this, uh, this tether cable typically is attached and you can't really get rid of it. Well, this drone is designed to actually drop the tether in flight if need be, and then you can go and continue your mission. So this was something really exciting from uh, Evolve Dynamics. Uh, DJI was here, obviously. Uh, not any new products from DJI. We saw the Matrix uh, 300. They had the, the P1 payload on it. Beautiful machine. Uh, never actually seen one in real life. Uh, we had the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advance that they had available here as well. Um, again, kind of an incredible machine for a fairly cheap price point for what it provides with this, uh, this uh, camera, IR camera. And then we saw Aero Environment. Uh, they have a uh, Vapor 55. So this thing was taking off actually from, from right around the corner here. Uh, a, a helicopter, an actual RC helicopter, extremely quiet massive blades and they were doing a demo of dropping a vest a safety vest down to someone on the ground and then came back and landed very very quiet a uh, very cool operation also from the same company we had the, the puma the puma is a fixed wing aircraft basically takes off and flies around for an extended period of time captures data uh, came back to do a full stall landing and this is the video i, I, I hope we can see right here in the background of the the drone actually just coming down and then landing right here in the grass in front of us pretty impressive demonstration. Uh, that's the same company that makes the Quantix, Quantix that uh, captures data for plant health and, and a bunch of other things. Um, a cool presentation from Brink. Brink is an American-based company uh, based in Las Vegas and they have the lemur and I think I mentioned the lemur in, in past videos. It's this uh, FPV drone that essentially is used to go indoors and, uh, and clear up rooms on the, on the inside of houses. So SWAT environment, if you want to think about it this way. Uh, they have the ability to push open doors, to break glass. So they did a demo actually. Uh, the tower that's right behind me right here, they have uh, pieces of glass and, and they have this uh, rotating thing right in the front of the drone that spins at I think 22,000 RPM. And uh, they basically go and tap it, tap the piece of glass, the, the glass breaks and then they're able to to, uh, enter inside and then they have the ability to communicate with other people inside of the building if they need to a uh, hostage situation or you know whatever it is uh, that they're talking to so that was a there was a really cool thing flown with FPV goggles and everything so um, we spent some time in the NIST lanes. Actually, I wanted to shoot the video right here. This right here is a NIST lane. Uh, NIST is a standard organization that uh, puts some, uh, some training material in place to basically help people 
get better at flying their drones. And this is especially true for public safety agencies. These are exercises that you can do and, uh, and essentially fly your drone. So you have buckets, you can see the buckets behind me, and you can fly the drone at different altitude, and, and then you have to take pictures of the buckets and make sure you see the inside of the buckets. Uh, they have all different styles. So they have this one here, they had NIST lanes up there that, uh, were, uh, that people could basically be using. They had a bus uh, where you have buckets all around the bus. So they're, they're trying to, uh, to pretend that there's a specific scenario and then uh, the, uh, you, you have to follow all around the bus and get the information. So this is a recon kind of deal. And that was really cool playing with the NIST lanes. Uh, we found a bunch of ground robots. Like I mentioned one that we, that we drove. Uh, there was a, uh, if you guys are familiar with Boston Dynamic, there's, they have a little dog looking drone. Now, I don't think it was them actually that was here. We never get the name of the company. Company. Uh, but they were here basically showing uh, what their robot can do and you can see some videos back here it was actually kind of interesting because you see this robot kind of struggling to do its thing and and it looks real it looks like an actual or dog or, or small horse that's kind of having trouble moving around you kind of feel bad for the robot actually as it's doing this um, we had some underwater equipment that was really really neat uh, we went to a quarry and uh, actually drove or flew I think they guess they call it flying uh, flying the underwater robots uh, very difficult quite frankly because you can't see really what's going on especially when the, the water was a little bit murky uh, but we we drove this thing around that was cool and then i, I think quite frankly the, the the big show this year was hotel and hotel had a, a couple things on the table that we looked at uh, the evo 2 with an rtk module that's actually not something that i think has even been published yet but uh, they, they have the ability to put on the evo 2 they have a, a new version of it that has little plugs on the top you can plug in a, an rtk module and they were talking about other accessories putting in lights on uh, putting a, a speaker kind of like what other people have been doing with these smaller drones for public safety purposes. Um, we saw the Hotel Smart Controller. I know I've mentioned it before and uh, we actually get our hands on one of them. Um, I was surprised. I was surprised because it was large, but not only was it large, it was also uh, comfortable to, to hold and comfortable to fly. So that was really cool. Um, and, then, and then they had their huge uh, VTOL, vertical takeoff and landing aircraft called the Dragonfish. And, and this was kind of the, the star of the show, I think. And, and we still have to go and fly this afternoon. So uh, hopefully after I record this, we'll have some footage of me flying this drone. But this is a vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. So it's, it's on the ground, it takes off vertically, and then it transitions into a horizontal flight. Now you're gonna say, this is not really something new. And you're right, this is not something new. The cool thing about this one is that it had the ability to switch between hover and forward flight in an instant. So if you wanted to slow down and hover, then you could actually do that. If you wanted to fly forward, then you could also do that at extreme speeds. This, this thing is efficient. I think it had a, a three hour battery uh, to go and do, and do its thing. So really, really impressive by this platform. Uh, we saw it flying around a couple times and uh, just really, really cool. So, uh, but yeah, that was, that was kind of the show. So th that's all I really want to cover this week because I think there were a lot of really good information that we saw. Uh, I want to give a couple of kudos to our friends, uh, Adrian Doko from uh, AUVSI Texas. Adrian is, uh, you know, been following him for a long time and it was actually a, a good, good thing to meet in person finally after this pandemic. So uh, excited. We spent a lot of time with Adrian yesterday. Uh, Jeff, Jeff Clementi, same thing. Uh, I'm happy to finally shake his hand in person and, and meet him. Uh, we had Brandon, Brandon Carr. I know he'll recognize himself. And then, uh, and then all of our friends at the public safety. So we have Coit Kessler with his team at the Austin uh, Fire Department. We have Adam Johnson with the, and all of his team as well. Uh, it was amazing to walk in and, and see all these guys, some of them wearing Pilot Institute shirts. So uh, a big thank you to all of them out there. And now I don't want to forget anyone, Chief Baker from uh, DJI. And then, and then all of our students that met us at uh, the meetup, we had a meetup on Monday night. Uh, it was great to meet in person, shake hands, talk to people, uh, fly drones, we flew drones, we took pictures, and uh, it was just awesome to meet everyone. So uh, an overall very good trip, and uh, next week we'll be back to our normal format. And uh, in the meantime, fly safe. We're gonna go fly this hotel drone, and then I'm gonna tell you how cool it was. So see you then.